What's up guys, coming to you with a shitty quality video tonight, <clears throat> talking about a couple different things. Let's talk about two different aspects of jujitsu or two different facets of jujitsu. Okay, I'm going to talk fast so I don't take up too much time and hopefully I don't fucking run out of video space. So, here's my thing. I think there's two types of jujitsu that exist today. Right? Not necessarily your old school guys versus your new school guys. That will always be there. As long as there's people aging and they're from the original days. But that's not necessarily anything that's anything. I mean, that's just uh, an old school of thought more than anything else. Um, what I think you're seeing more today is you have your guys that are saying, I'm strictly self-defense. And then I see your guys that are, well, I'm strictly sport. Or that's the type of schools you're seeing today. Right? Um... Here's the thing, if you are strictly self-defense, I saw a video that Ryan Hall put out, and he said, you know, it's, forget how he worded it, but it's, it's, it's pretty much kind of like bullshit in the sense of what a real fight looks like, and I kind of agreed with what he was saying, so if you're coming from a school that self-defense is literally just, like a taekwondo, I shouldn't shit on, I'm not shit on taekwondo or karate or anything like that, I'm just mean like, where you're going through a form of a scenario that might never ever exist. It's like kind of saying, grab my wrist, no my other wrist, grab my throat like this. Yeah. I think the world in the, in the sense of a street fight has changed a lot. I think, um, because I don't want this to be misunderstood when I say that I focus on a fight-based jiu-jitsu, okay? So that's your first facet of, or your, that's your first avenue of jiu-jitsu. Let's call that jiu-jitsu A. Jiu-jitsu B is just competition. So I look at jiu-jitsu A as you can be a jiu-jitsu fighter. Jiu-jitsu B is some people are jiu-jitsu competitors. A jiu-jitsu fighter is somebody that just basically trains jiu-jitsu, but always has in the back of their mind, I am training this for the idea of a fight, whether it be MMA or whether it be I go, I'm a bouncer, I'm a sheriff's officer, whatever it may be. So all that means is when it comes to their training, like myself even sometimes, my training, I, I keep myself very honest with my techniques. Does this offer punch protection? Am I using the right type of distance? Am I in a safe position or will I tire out? You know, things like that. It's not that I stand like this, he comes here, I do a hip throw. It's, it's none of that. That's, that's, that's like when you're going off into kind of like a different world of shit that will never really happen, you know? Kind of like, how do you defend a guy with a gun? Or uh, attack a guy, whatever. It's been a long fucking day with my kids. You gotta get what I'm saying. But then you have your guy that's a jiu-jitsu competitor who's not really thinking about street or fight or any MMA at all. His thing is, I just want to continue to open my book and learn and learn and learn. And I think there is a definite place for that. And I think there's definitely a place for learning the... The fight aspect. So, instead of just saying, I'm a jiu-jitsu competitor, I'm a jiu-jitsu fighter, why not build the ultimate jiu-jitsu person you can be? Learn both. Which is super fucking easy. If you're learning competition, right? So, mix it up some days. Just say, today I'm not going to do certain techniques because I want to think, what's it going to be like if somebody's throwing punches at me? And not even just that. What would this position offer me if I'm throwing punches? I always hear all the time, it's like, how do I defend myself if they're throwing punches at me? You know what? Fuck all that shit. Whether it's MMA or it's in the street, you should be throwing fucking punches. And you should learn that sometimes punches are not the best option, but elbows are the better option. So once in a while, grab your buddy and when you're in freaking side control or even in half guard, realize in sport, this could be a problem area. For you, because he's looking for sweeps, he's looking for different things, he might go deep. But for the guy on top in a fight, man, I'm going to grab your head, boom, boom, boom. Just see what's there, you know, just kind of, not even if you do it, but just see in your head like, man, let me just see position before submission, position before strikes. Let me see, can I control him right here? Do I own this position? Because that will spread your jujitsu fucking to the nth dimension. So that's what I'm saying. So at the same time, if you're a guy who says, no, 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 I just think fight. I just think fight. Well, you're selling yourself fucking short. You know, that's like looking at um, 
the reverse Dela Hiva, the kiss of the dragon technique, which I've been having a lot of fun with lately, right? So that's why I talk about it. Well, if I'm fighting, I'm never thinking about that. Well, why not though? Because what's happening is if you just focus on just a fight, your, your book stops right here. It just stops. You're learning to stop. You've closed off everybody. So now you're dead. You die. It's over. But if you mix in the world of sport and just fun and camaraderie and having a good time training, you can keep developing and developing and developing. And what happens is some sport techniques that they say, man, that shit would never work in a street. Well, you've gotten so good at it that you know how you can make it work in the street. You know how you could use little movements and stuff like that, whether it's an MMA fight, whether it's whatever. That's the thing. Just keep growing. Shinya Aoki, look at his techniques, you know? He's an MMA, so there's rules, of course, but he's able to apply a lot of his stuff. There's the guys I look at. Shinya Aoki, right? In jiu-jitsu, he does well. In fighting, he does well. Back in the day, uh, Ricardo Arona. That's, that, to me, he's at, that's an old-school style of jiu-jitsu. Just, I'm going to clinch, I'm going to fucking take you down, I'm going to ground and pound the shit out of you, and I'm going to own something from there, Right? In jiu-jitsu competition, did extremely well too. Because he was well-rounded in all of it. So don't sell yourself short and just say, no, I'm just a self-defense guy. Because that's just, that even now, I don't even like that term. Because then get in line with the, the, the guy who's just drilling, shadow boxing in the corner. Who's like, I'm just getting ready for the main fight of my life. Okay. Well, what about sparring? No, no, no. So that's what I'm saying. If you want to learn jiu-jitsu, be the best you can be. Don't close your mind off. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Keep opening yourself up. Keep trying to learn new things. Whether one aspect is more important than, you, than the other, train them both, man. Relax your mind once in a while. You know, coming from a guy who used to fight, if you literally think about fights all the time, anybody that's out there that fights knows exactly what I'm talking about. Your mind starts to go through a certain process. You just become in fucking fight mode. You're not the most happiest person to be around and the nicest person to be around because you're just used to fucking having to turn that on and be aggressive. You know, especially leading up to a fight. God, you're a fucking asshole. Um, at least I am, and I'm sure other guys are too. So, remember some days train train like you're getting ready for a fight. And other days, just fucking play. Have fun. Do your jujitsu. Think about stuff that you would never do before. Because if you stop learning, you stop growing. And then you suck. And then you just lay on the ground and you're just fucking saying, Well, it's just because I'm looking for self-defense, so I hold this position. Let me tell you something. Right? It's just like how we all know jiu-jitsu is the ultimate equalizer for any size, weight, or whatever against somebody out in a different weight class. Right? But let's, that's that being said, I'm 170 right now, which I do plan on going up over the next few months. You guys will watch me blow up in front of your eyes on camera. I promise you that. And if you have any questions of how I do it, I will share that with you um, through private messages. It cannot be discussed online. And, uh, so 170, if I get a fucking brand new spastic ass white belt who's 6'2 and 245, he's going to give me a motherfucking hard time. I might play guard with him and play my survival techniques, but he's going to go so ape shit that even though I'm trying to slow the pace, slow the pace, slow the pace, I'm waiting for him to tire. Well, let's say he doesn't tire that fast. Let's say he does the fat guy choke and I'm under pressure. So I still, I still relax. But nonetheless, you get what I'm saying? Be the best you can be. So where I'm going with this is, I know jiu-jitsu is for everybody. But why not give yourself the best advantage you can? Why not once in a while hit the gym? Why not once in a while do some fucking powerlifting and strongman type workout? Don't do bodybuilding work because that just makes you look pretty. Do stuff that will transfer over to your type of training. Train yourself like an athlete, even if you're not. We all want to be athletes, don't we? So train like you're one. Lift some fucking weight. Get strong, get aggressive, fight for your positions. It's okay, you tire yourself out a little bit, you learn a lesson, you pace yourself a little bit more. Understand that there are some people that move at faster speeds than you, you will never keep up with them, you will never be as strong as them, so now you have to outsmart them. But that's what you wanna do. Don't keep trying to play your certain style all the time. Open yourself up, realize, 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 realize. So much to learn, there's always so, so much to learn. We'll never learn it all. And we'll just keep training for fucking ever. <sighs> That's my video, guys. Feel free to hit me up. Um, things have been good lately. Things have been really good lately. 
life is just a beautiful fucking cherry just waiting to get popped, right? Um, so remember that key points to leave you with. Remember to train for a fight like you're a fucking MMA superstar. But do take into consideration things that can happen in the street. Don't worry about eye gouges, people grabbing your balls, something like that. Because fuck, worst case, yeah? Let's say I overhook and I grab your head, I'm going to bite your fucking throat. Why not do that, right? Now we're getting into crazy world. So I'm not saying do that with your partners. But also, if you're one of these guys that's stuck in your ways, like, hey, hey, no, no, no. I just stick with the fundamentals and I just turn them into fucking razor sharp. Like, hey, I do that shit too. But then my book stops right here. I don't want my book to stop there. I don't want to just drill the same techniques forever. I don't want to just know, well, if I went into a competition, this is what I could do, and I will nail my points. Who gives a shit, dude? Keep growing. Keep growing. Otherwise, get the fuck off the mat. You know? It's so irrelevant. I don't even want to go on tangents right now about, like, belts and stuff like that. It's Even now, think about this, how subjective a belt really is now in jiu-jitsu. What does jiu-jitsu belts really show? Because now, especially nowadays... It is becoming so fucking watered down and it's so disappointing. And this is another reason why you all have to train for a fight. It's in case, God forbid, some asshole says, you train jiu-jitsu? Really? I'm a fucking boxer. Let's see what you got, bitch. Right in the club and just says, let's go. You need to be able to fucking stand by your jiu-jitsu and prove to him that jiu-jitsu is still what it was fucking 20 years ago. You need to show them still. That's our responsibility. Don't fucking forget that. Don't walk around with cauliflower ears looking like a badass and not be able to really back it up when the time comes. Boom! That's all I got for you guys. I gotta get the fuck out of here. Thanks again, guys. Keep watching.